The literary prize that celebrates translated fiction, the International Booker, has announced its six shortlisted titles. Among them is Maria Stepanova's family memoir in which she dips her toes in various forms and genres. In Memory of Memory starts with the death of an aunt and the family photos and diaries she left behind. While bringing her family's story alive, Stepanova also tells the story of historical and cultural changes that happened in Russia over the last century. Well, we're now joined by Maria Stepanova and the translator of her book, Sasha Dagdell. Hi there both. It's lovely to have you with us on Showcase today. I really appreciate your time. So Maria, congratulations on being the short on being the shortlist. I mean, both of you, of course. Uh, what does it mean to you being in the list? Was it a surprise, Maria? Yes, of course, uh, it was. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it still is a huge surprise. And uh, well, I'm stunned, I'm humbled, I'm honored. And uh, I'm tremendously glad, not only for uh, our work, but for myself, for Sasha, for the recognition our work is gaining, but mostly for the genre itself, because the, uh, this special kind of writing that is based uh, beneath the borders of conventional fiction, something that not exactly a novel, that not exactly a memoir, not exactly fiction, not exactly non-fiction, something that is uh, a bit hard to put your finger on. The, the fact that it is getting noticed nowadays, that is a, an important thing. That's exactly why I asked whether it was a surprise for you, because we're not really used to seeing this sort of you know, I would call it almost experimental sort of writing in these kind of lists. So, you know, in that sense, congratulations again, because that was a brave thing for you to do, I guess. And Sasha, uh, congratulations to you as well. I wonder, you know, what kind of a process was it for you translating this book? Because I know you are close friends with Maria. So, you know, how is it working with your close friends on an award-winning book? It was an immense privilege to translate the book. It's also an extremely hard book because it has so many thoughts and beautiful images in it, but it's also written in this poetic language. So there's so much that you want to could keep in and and allow to be in the English version that it was um, it was always just a almost a battle. What 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 could I? What, how much could I get into the English? How how little could I lose in the process? And I, I think there was something, so I'm really relieved actually that the, um, the book has been recognized, that it's found its readers in Anglophone countries, because um, I hope that's testament to the, to the process of translating with Maria and trying to, cont to, trying to retain as much as possible in the book. Mm -hmm. And um, you, Maria, you speak English. I mean, you both are close friends. And so I wonder, you know, what kind of a process in that sense was it? I mean, were you involved? Uh, were you, you know, sometimes maybe giving some edits and then were you, you know, you're both poets as well. So that's interesting. That's an interesting layer too. So tell us about the process. Well, it was, uh, it was, a, and a, in a way it still is an uh, ongoing process of conversation because it didn't start at the point where Sasha <clears throat> actually started translating the book. We were talking about, about the book and about everything, and we keep talking on and on. And so it was an easy thing to be discussing some, well, some tiny, intricate uh, things uh, uh, about that translation, as well as all the other things. And uh, in a way, I am thinking of this book as uh, an outcome, one more outcome of this conversation we had and we're still having. It is a lucky to have this, but the conversation is the one that really means something. Mm -hmm. And Maria, I really, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you answered this question many times, but I'm really curious why you wanted to write this book, because we all lose relatives and we all have families that, you know, that are full of people who don't really want to be noticed. And then, you know, wh what was it the moment where you were like, OK, I have to write this book? I mean, you said in an interview that you wanted to please the dead. So in that sense, it's really interesting. Tell us what does it mean and 
uh, why were you motivated to write this book? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I can't remember uh, the time in my younger years or in my childhood years when I didn't have this notion of the necessity of writing this book. There was no time uh, completely free of this necessity. And, uh, um, you know, I've uh, started writing it for the first time, and uh, it is a kind of a family joke, but still I have this school notebook that I've started writing in when I was 10 years old uh, with the first drafts of what had later uh, become in memory of memory. Uh, just a few pages, four or five. But some of the stories that are inhibiting in memory of memory are already there. So I was, I always knew that I am going to write this book. And I suppose that, again, it's an outcome of something bigger. Because when you're having four or five generations of people who were moving through the historical process, whether it's catastrophes, staying voluntarily silent. I guess this burden of silence, it just has to be released. And uh, I always knew that I'm going, well, at least to try mm -hmm. helping them, making their stories more visible and uh, creating a space where they could be told in complete safety. And that is also Maria, important. this is interesting, and I want to interrupt you here. Is it because you thought that your family's story was actually more interesting than the others? Or were you just thinking that stories are in general, you know, you know they need to be told and they're usually interesting? Uh -huh. that's, uh, that, that, that's very interesting. And uh, this question, it kind of gets under the core to the to the their heart of my book, because uh, my, the main obstacle and the main challenge of writing the whole thing was dealing with something that, that is hard to, to avoid and hard to face. My uh, relatives were uh, absolutely ordinary people, no special uh, interesting uh, things, nothing to place them into this category of interesting that would make them somehow privileged. But I wanted to find a way of writing about the people who are usually, basically, considered to be interesting, finding a way to tell their stories so they would become interesting, but in a different way not because they did or thought something extraordinary, but the very quality of their ordinariness is something that makes them so dear to my heart. And there are stories so amazing to be conveyed. Wow, it's lovely. It's lovely to hear it from you. And um, uh, as for one last question, Sasha, I want to turn to you. Uh, you know, Probably one of the X factors about this book is that it doesn't really submit to one particular category as we, you know, as we just talked about. So was it scary for you as a translator in the beginning, you know, when you're, uh, you know, faced with this book that was, as far as I know, treated as a space, you know, as a, as a space to be curated rather than a story to be just written, you know. So in that sense, tell us, uh, was it a bit of an intimidating task? Well, it was quite exhilarating, really. And I think I didn't think about it as being one genre or another genre. I simply tried to follow the voice because it, had, it has a very, very clear, distinctive voice. And if, if I followed that voice, then um, it, was, it, it was possible to translate. And as for the, the sense of genres coming together, I find that I find that incredibly refreshing. Um, I said exhilarating because um, it shakes up all the, the 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 norms, all the ideas we have about literature and what it should do. 
And Maria talked really beautifully about the book and how it remembers ordinary people. Although the book is very specific in some ways to the experience of people in Soviet Russia and 19th century Russia, the actual ideology, I suppose, of the book is incredibly universal about the ethics of remembering and the ethics of nostalgia. All right. Well, there's a lot more to talk about the book, but unfortunately, this is all the time we have. It was lovely having you both. Thanks a lot and good luck. <laughs>